The king has returned. The prophecies fulfilled. The years of longing are over. The king has returned. And now all will be made right. Amidst shouts of praise and tears of joy, the pleading for justice, the cries for our enemies' defeat. The king has returned. The king who was driven from his land as an infant, who spent his first years as a refugee, who understands pain and suffering. But this king is not who we were looking for. This king brings justice not over our enemies, but in the midst of our enemies. He brings peace, not in our land, but in our souls. He is the answer to the prayer we did not know we were praying. The King has returned. Long live the King.
Greetings, I am Reverend Diana Reeves, pastor of Wyandotte First United Methodist Church. Welcome to our Palm Sunday worship service. On this day, we normally expect to gather with palm branches and festive music, rejoicing as our children wave their palms, and the musicians lead us into singing boldly and with joy. But today, we gather apart from one another in our own homes, sheltering and protecting others from a virus that prevents crowds from gathering. Our message today will be the celebration of hope himself coming into the city. And it sure sounds as though we could welcome that same hope into our city today. Let us take a look at the Gospel of Matthew's reading, starting with chapter 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, saying, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. There has been, over the period of time, that many reasons for crowds gathering. Some gatherings have been for other than pleasant events, riots, protest, but many have been gatherings for pleasant reasons. Many of us were brought up in households where we learned it was a good thing to just blend in with the crowd versus sticking out. Don't do anything that will draw unnecessary attention to ourselves. But if you go to join a protest of injustice, just don't be on the front line. Don't get arrested. So what we have today is a story about a man who came into Jerusalem with fanfare, Jesus. He appeared before the crowd in pomp and circumstance by the way of a brilliant parade, a joyous celebration, almost a royal ceremony. In this unusual Palm Sunday experience, we have a vivid reminder that the pomp and circumstance were never the point of Palm Sunday anyway. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was never meant to be about royalty and popularity in a crowd. By riding into Jerusalem on the colt of a donkey, Jesus fulfilled an ancient prophecy that is recorded in the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This was the only instance written in all four Gospels, in which Jesus rode an animal. 
By riding a donkey, Jesus illustrated the kind of Messiah he was. Not a political hero, but a gentle, humble servant. Throwing cloaks in the path of someone was an act of homage and submission. And along with the waving of palm branches, served as a recognition of royalty. The people recognized Jesus, at least some of them, as the promised Messiah. The people's cries of Hosanna came from Psalm 118. And a Hosanna itself means save now. Despite what Jesus had foretold about his mission, the people were looking for a military Messiah who would overthrow the Romans and restore Israel's independence. The pilgrims, the Jews coming for their annual journey to Jerusalem, were coming to town alongside Jesus. And along the way, were singing the Halal songs, the let's go up to Zion songs. They were kind of like the familiar Christian songs we sing today around the campfire Christian camp. These Hallel Psalms are full of hosannas, which means God saves, and hallelujahs, which means praise Yahweh. They are ancient praise songs, and the pilgrim Jews would sing these, whether Jesus was coming into town with them or not. The verse, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, was what the pilgrims sang as they went up to Zion. But this day, it takes a special meaning because this time, their king really has come to town. This time, the ultimate son of David really had arrived and the vast majority, majority of them didn't even know it. Or if they did, they had a very different vision of what sort of king Jesus would be. And now today, we've been taught that crowds can be just as deadly as the coronavirus spreads across our nation. How do we celebrate Palm Sunday without the crowd, without this pomp, without the circumstance? In the crowds we yearn for, or the crowds we avoid, Jesus comes. Jesus arrives to meet us, whether we are famous or not, anonymous or amazingly popular. Jesus meets us in the crowded lives we live, in the quietness of our homes, without a crowd. Just as Jesus meets us in the crowds where we feel unknown or in the crowds where we feel put down or lost, Jesus is there. Jesus meets us, inviting us to celebrate his presence among us, even as we recognize that Jesus' presence does not make us powerful or famous, but simply loved and accepted. Jesus meets us even on the journey to the cross, just as Jesus meets us on the journey of living with a global pandemic, reminding us that he knows the journey of tragedy, the journey of solidarity, the journey of sorrow, the journey of death. Jesus meets us. And even in the crowds, each one of us matters. Jesus meets each of us individually, personally, lovingly, one by one, even in the crowded world we live. What if Jesus was to come today, a day where no crowds are allowed? He would arrive by himself, perhaps with some of his disciples, six feet apart, only nine of the 12 would be allowed to accompany him since there's only crowds of 10 or less allowed. But let me ask you in another way. 
Do we want Jesus to come today? That should be a resounding yes, because we need hope today. We wonder if he's coming soon. We're living in a world in crisis. Good news is hard to find. People are lonely. People are hurting. People are dying, unable to be with loved ones as they move on. Jesus did not come to meet our expectations of what a king should be like. He came to meet our deepest needs, our needs for salvation, more than temporary political solutions, our needs to humble ourselves in the sight of God instead of trying to exalt ourselves above other nations, our need to let God be King and Lord over our lives, not ourselves, nor any other human being, needs to be Jesus. Who will we be more apt to be like? This is a high and holy week in the life of a Christian. Like the pilgrims, Will we be like them who didn't understand Jesus? Like Peter, who said that he would never deny or desert Jesus? Would we be like Mary Magdalene, who gave him a precious, costly gift of ointment? Or what about John, who stuck with Jesus to the end? Or would we be like the rest of the disciples that scattered. It is my prayer that sometime during this holy week, we would really take time to discern what is important and that we would indeed turn to Jesus, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. For only Jesus can give us the peace, the peace that we all so desperately seek in this world today. Only Jesus can give the peace that surpasses all human understanding, which is so welcomed and needed at this time. May the joy of Palm Sunday bless you throughout this week and bring you back to virtual worship on Thursday as we remember the events of Jesus' night, his last night, the night that he was arrested. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pause this day to give thanks to you for what this day stands for, the beginning of Holy Week, the start of the journey toward the power of the cross to the victory of the resurrection. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, who indeed is the King of Kings. We give you worship, for you are holy and just. Thank you, Lord, that your ways are far greater than our ways, that your thoughts are far deeper than our thoughts. During this time in our cities, our nation, and our world, Give us protection, give us healing, give us hope. Help us to stay strong and true to you and help us not to follow after the voice of the crowds, but to press in close to you, to hear your whispers, to seek after you, to you alone. We praise you, we bless you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen. Yeah. <laughs>